Hey everyone, it's Eric. Um, I know I put out a vote asking what people wanted next, and one of the things they wanted me to share was something that I shared on Twitter uh, a few weeks ago, which was how to export some of your creations into 3D files that then could be used in augmented reality or VR uh, using Windows Mixed Reality or the Merge Cube, for example, in the classroom. And I'm working on that video, but I wanted to do something a little bit different today considering the state of affairs uh, in the US and around the world. Uh, and one of those things, of course, uh, is what are we going to do about reaching students should we have to close schools and go into a distance learning model because of the coronavirus, because of COVID-19? Um, luckily, there are a ton of resources available to us as teachers, uh, as students, but I know that's not always the case for everyone. And there are definitely some companies out there that are stepping up, and I cannot be happier uh, that Minecraft Education and Microsoft is uh, one of those platforms that is really stepping up. So as you can see from this article on their blog, uh, one of the things that Microsoft has done using Minecraft Education uh, has extended access to Minecraft Education for any of our students uh, in any district uh, that have an Office 365 account. So if they have an Office 365 account, if you are a Windows district and your students have Windows accounts, uh, you actually have access, or your students have access to Minecraft Education Edition from now until almost the end of this school year, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal because they really wanted to give students an opportunity to have something to work on for remote learning. And to be honest, this platform is fantastic for remote learning. So I kind of want to share some of the resources and things that they shared because that might be a very real scenario and situation uh, for some of us. Some of you are probably already in that situation. So I wanted to share what they were doing, what Minecraft Education and Microsoft were doing uh, to support distance and remote learning. Uh, and what resources they're providing. And then I was gonna jump into Minecraft and kind of share some of the very easy things you can do to have students share uh, the things they're creating uh, and submit those as assignments even over great distance. So even if they're not in school. Now keep in mind, they do need internet access. I do know that some companies are stepping up. Comcast is offering uh, free internet to students who have to uh, work with uh, a remote learning environment depending on the area. They're one of those companies. I'm sure others are stepping up. I know many of the school districts, including mine, uh, that have devices accessible are considering loaning those out to students that do not have devices or families that don't have devices at home, which is great. So if that's the case, and this is something that you want to use or that your students can access at home, they're making it real easy for you, provided you have Microsoft accounts, you now have a Minecraft Education Edition account, and so do your students. So let's look at what they're sharing. Um, so first of all, this is uh, the article that they put out. It is on their blog on the education website. That is education.minecraft.net. And I will provide a link in the description below. Uh, but one of the things in there is the remote learning toolkit. And I want to open that one up for you. It's a PDF. Again, I will link this in the description below. Uh, but they've provided this fantastic toolkit for specifically for remote learning. So if we look through it, it gives a brief overview, which is great because we have many parents who don't know what this is and are kind of tentative about their kids using Minecraft for education. This gives a great quick overview of why that is something that our kids could really value from. Uh, and it's a valuable experience in the classroom and out of the classroom. There is quick start information. So they do have a link that lets you know if your accounts are eligible for that free account. Now, if you're a district like mine, you've already got an account, uh, but if not, you can check right here and you can see if you've got an account. Uh, next is downloading the app. Now, again, a district like mine, we do this internally. We push this to devices. We make it available to teachers and students through things like the software center. Uh, that allows us to manage things as a district. However, this is really great because if they want to access this at home or do it on their home devices, then they need to get it right from here. They need to get it right from the education.minecraft.net website on their home computers or on their personal computers. And this link right here will show them exactly how to do that. There are some uh, tips for teachers out there like myself who are using Minecraft in the classroom. So they've got online courses for those educators. They got starter guides, they've got tips, it's fantastic. For those who don't know, they do have full uh, lessons and curriculum available both on their website and actually directly in the platform. So I'll share some of that with you in just a little bit. And they have, of course, some examples, including their Minecraft build challenges, which are my favorite. So they do have uh, some tools for assessment and collaboration, or at least some things to consider. 
And that's actually what I'm going to share in a little a uh, little bit uh, is what those students can do from home and submit to you for via your learning management system or email to basically have them turning in assignments even when they're home in something that they're passionate about doing. So they did share a ton of curriculum kits that they have access to. I'm not going to go over all these, but they are phenomenal, uh, especially elementary school. They've got things aligned to third, fourth, and fifth grade mathematics to ELA lessons. They've got computational thinking and, of course, computer science because you can code in here. Uh, they've got the classroom build challenges, which they can do from home, lessons on conservation, a huge social emotional learning kit, which is phenomenal, uh, and so much more. There's a full chemistry lab in here uh, in Minecraft education that they can access. And all of these links that are in this document that I will share below uh, are all in there that will explain all of that to you and your students. We want to look at individual lessons because more than likely if they're working from home, they're going to be working independently and not collaboratively. Uh, that is possible in some districts. It really depends on how your district manages uh, those tools. They do need to be in the same domain if they are going to join each other's workspaces and work collaboratively. So they won't be able to connect with students outside their district or their network, which is a good thing because it's a security thing. And again, here you see tons of language, arts and math and science, social studies, art and design, computer science, and it goes on and on. There are additional resources. This is a great document to get anybody started and considering they're giving it away for right now just to make sure that students have access to something that will benefit them for remote learning. This is phenomenal. This is the perfect document to get you started. But what I want to share with you today, and I'm going to jump into my game here real quick, is how to use some of the tools that are built into the game. Uh, for students to submit assignments, to submit work. So I'm going to go ahead and resume this game. Now, admittedly, I was building this world, uh, so you'll get a sneak peek, I guess, at the next video, specifically for the next video, because we were looking at exporting uh, creations for 3D printing, for VR, for AR, and so on, using structure blocks, and that will be the next video. So I was doing some pixel art, so sure enough, I've got a really nice big uh, R2-D2 over here that I've been sharing. Here's my R2-D2. Right. But let's say this was my lesson plan. Let's say this was an arts lesson that I was doing from home and you were having students create pixel art from home or maybe they were telling a narrative uh, about their favorite science fiction character. Uh, this would be one of mine. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so basically, I've created R2-D2 here out of pixel art. But I want to look at some of those tools that would allow me to submit to my teacher, if I was the student, uh, assignments on this. And there are three tools that really benefit more than anything else. Uh, those are the camera. Oh, sorry, wrong button. So I'm going to go into my inventory here by pressing E on the keyboard. And the first one is the camera. So I'm going to grab that camera and pull it down into my inventory. We're going to clear that out. The next one is the portfolio. Now, the portfolio is basically a book that's going to store uh, all of your photos that you take. So we'll look at that in a second. But I'm going to pull that down here into my inventory. Drop it right there. And finally, we're going to look at book and quill. Now, I'm going to type in book here, and you're going to notice there is an absurd amount of books already built into the game. We are looking for this one right here. That's the book with the quill. That's a little feather attached to it. And I'm sure you've figured this out. You're bright people if you're watching this. Uh, book and quill is the one that allows you to author books and actually write directly into those books and create those books in the game. So we're going to grab those three tools, and I'm going to get out of my menu here. So I've created this R2, and my teacher wants me to share what I've done with this R2, why I chose this character, create a narrative, whatever it may be. So I'm going to start by taking some photos, right? So I'm going to uh, make sure that my, com my camera is highlighted on my inventory bar there at the bottom, and I'm going to right-click to take a photo. And notice it's taking a Polaroid. Uh, for people my age, you might have to explain to your students what a Polaroid is. Uh, but yeah, so it's taking a photo. Right, and I can take a photo down here too. Let's take some other photos of it. Maybe I want to get in the photo myself. Well, I can do that a few ways. One is I can use function and F5 on my keyboard. Again, function F5 will cycle through three camera views. One of them is the first person mode that we are kind of in default for. The next one is first person or third person mode from behind. And the next one is third person mode from the front, which is really perfect for taking a selfie. So again, I can line this up. There's my selfie. Right click. Oh, gotta look up a little bit. Come on, right click for me. There it goes. And I can get my selfie. 
a little laggy right now. Sorry about that. So I've got my selfie. And again, I can hit F5 again and cycle right out of that. Additionally, and this is a lot of fun, I can put that camera on the ground or on any surface. If I look specifically at a surface and right click and that camera is on the ground. But what's cool about that camera is that when I right click on it again to take a photo, it will follow me wherever I go and take the picture where I am always in that picture. So you notice it turned around. It doesn't matter if I move, it's following me and it'll take the picture. So there's several ways you can use the camera, which is pretty great. So I've got a couple photos now, right? I took a photo or two of the R2. Uh, I took a couple selfies of myself with it. And now I wanna look at those photos. So I'm going to highlight my portfolio and pull up my portfolio in my hand. And again, I'm going to right click to open that portfolio. And here are all the photos that I just took. Notice that it says caption at the bottom of each of these photos. And I can cycle from page to page and look at these photos. And you can see all the photos that I've taken. And that works out pretty well, right? But I want to add some captions. So we're going to add some captions to this. So this is me and R2. And I know that's terrible grammar. Deal with it, all right? More of R2 and I. And so on. You get the idea. I'm not going to label all of these. But the students can caption their photos. So anything that they've created, they can take photos of and they can caption. And of course, I'm sure you're noticing by now, there's a big button at the center bottom that says export portfolio. If I click that button, it brings up my file structure and it allows me to export the portfolio they just created as a PDF file. So notice right here, it automatically names it too, which is great if you're a teacher because this is getting the students used to naming conventions for files, which admittedly I'm terrible at. So they're even worse at it, but notice it uses my name uh, and it uses the name of the world. In this case, it was Pixel Art R2, and it gives the date that I created this portfolio. The students can save this, and then they can send it to you in however you're collecting online assignments, whether that's through email, whether you have a learning management system like Canvas where they can submit assignments. They've now got a file that they can submit online uh, as an assignment. Now, that's if you just wanted photos, but what if you wanted them to really dig into writing? We want to add a massive ELA component to this. Well, I'm going to cancel that because I have a million of these saved, but you get the idea. And I'm going to close my portfolio and I'm going to bring open that next tool, the book and quill. Now, the book and quill is exactly what it sounds like. It's a book that I can author and I can write whatever I wanted to. Now, I'm not going to. Yeah, we're going to go nuts. I'm not going to sit here and try to make up an R2D2 story because that's just not the time I've got in the day. Um, although I probably would make up an R2 story anyway. So I can type in here. I can also come down here where you see the little pen or pencil at the bottom of the page. And you can see there's other things that I can add by adding or inserting pages. But right here is something that looks like that Polaroid picture. And I can pull the photos from my portfolio directly into my book that I'm creating. And again, I can caption those photos and so on. Now I can't export this yet. You'll notice that, right? And I can add, again, I can flip this page I can add more pages and I can just keep writing and writing and writing. I can make a nice long book right here in my world. Now, when I'm done with my book, I want to submit it. I would go down here to where it says sign. And this is going to allow me, first of all, it tells me who the author is when it's me, but it also allows me to title my book, uh, you know, R2 and I. And then it says sign and close, but notice the disclaimer there. It says, note, when you sign the book, it will no longer be editable. It does finalize the book, but that's a good thing because if your students are in shared worlds, it means they can't mess with each other's books once they have finished their books. And again, these books can be added to a world. They can be put into a chest where anyone can go in and access them. They can be added to the bookshelves. If you're creating a library or, or a, a bookshelf in a world, the students can author the books that are on that bookshelf or in those chests for anyone to access. But I'm going to go ahead and sign and close this. And notice now my book has changed. It's no longer the book and quill. It's now this glowy published book, which is great. And I'm going to open it again by right clicking. And now that button has changed to just like before export. And again, I can export the book that I've created in Minecraft ex uh, ed the education edition, tongue twister. I can export that book. I can save it. And again, I can upload it as a assignment for my teacher, which is fantastic. So that is a few ways that students can submit assignments from home using Minecraft Education. They can build, they can create, then they can grab their camera, take photos, 
put those photos in their portfolio, add those photos to a book and quill along with a narrative and submit that writing assignment with photos of things they've created right from Minecraft, which is phenomenal. Additionally, and I'm gonna exit this for now, we're gonna save and exit that world because the other thing the students can do is actually send you a copy of the whole world that they've created. So I've got that R2 world that I've just created. And if I go into view worlds, here's my pixel art R2. Awful picture for it, but it's a pixel art R2. And if I click on there and go to settings, and I come over to the right-hand side and scroll way down, all the way down, right over here. Oh, pointing the wrong way. Right there, right there. I can export this world. So I can, again, I can export this as a .mc world file. Uh, your computer, if you have Minecraft Education Edition installed, will know that that is a uh, Minecraft world. And if they submit it to you and you open that file, it will open right in your Minecraft account and you will have a copy of the world that they created so you can explore their creations. Uh, of course, the alternative is host a world, get your students to join remotely if you can, uh, and you can experience the world remotely right there with them. All of that information is in that document. There are links to get you started. I am so thrilled that Minecraft and Microsoft are doing this. So thank you, Microsoft. Thank you, Minecraft Education Edition, for providing this tool to our teachers and our students during this time, uh, and our parents, really. This is something parents can definitely do with students. Uh, but providing this in this time when things are kind of uncertain, and a lot of us may be in a situation where we are not directly with our students and our learning remotely. Anyway, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for putting up with all of my tongue twisters today. And the fact that I'm uh, playing with the green screen, which definitely doesn't look perfect yet. So maybe in the next video, it'll get even better. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Glad to have you. And we will see you in the next video. Stay safe. Uh, stay safe. Yeah.